Club Raymond members, I'm sitting with Lainey Lewis from the Fine Arts Conservancy, and I've got to tell you, this is a fascinating place, and you're going to enjoy this segment. We are sitting in front of a particular restored piece of art that's actually uh, true in nature. Can you tell us a little bit about this, Lainey? Yes, this is a watercolor, and that's unique because watercolors are not usually not this large. This is 101 inches in length by uh, 59 inches, and that's big Huge. for watercolor. Yes. It is, it is, but it's made out of two sheets of, of paper that were put together, and it was painted in 1888, and that's another unique thing about it. It was, it's a uh, painting of the Battle of Freeland, Napoleon's battle, and it was done by a French artist who, who wanted to do five p major paintings of Napoleon's battles, but he only got a few accomplished. The oil of this is in the Metropolitan Museum, and it was wow. painted first. Usually, the watercolor comes first, and then the oil. But in this case, it was it was the reversed. Opposite. It exactly. You know, I took the liberty of uh, googling or going on Wikipedia, and yeah, it was a battle. It was uh, fought in uh, uh, June of 1807. It was the Battle of Friedland. It was very decisive. This was actually what ended the hostilities between Russia and France, wow. which I didn't know. So thank <laughs> you for bringing this. And what's amazing is that I think you said these were real, real characters, right? They're, yeah. They're real. Yeah. Well, they actually had photos that I was able to compare. And in this grouping right here, uh, we've got Nicolas Ogino, who was a general. We've got uh, General Etienne de Nassoucy. And we also have uh, Field Marshal Michel Ney out of this grouping right here. So it, it's a fascinating photo. Tell us what you did to it. How did it come to you? It came to us from a private collection. And it was be, it's being moved down to South Florida and they wanted to take care of it, which is great because we love people that take care of their artwork. And they were- Owner to remain unnamed, of that course. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. And. The, the challenge was, when it comes in, in this environment from another environment, we have to keep it stable. Okay. And we don't want any of the envir in, environmental issues that we have here in Florida, such as mold, mm -hmm. to affect the piece. Now that would be major. It would be really major. But just a little backstory for you. Uh -huh. uh, Gordon Lewis is a partner in the business, and he came up with the idea of if, if artwork had its own environment, mm -hmm then it could travel, it could go to museum exhibitions, and we wouldn't have to worry about what the temperature was going to be like, what the humidity was okay. going to be like. We're going to just seal it all in. So that's what he came up with. And so now, this many years later, it's kind of, I, I'm not going to say the standard in, mm -hmm. in uh, frame, the framing industry, but it certainly is something that the conservators recommend and do. So that's what we did on this. We and put, Gordon has been a pioneer in this sort of uh, restoration and preservation of these absolutely, uh, fine arts works. Absolutely. And it has its own challenges because what we do is called a microclimate or a sealed system. Mm -hmm. So we are actually sealing in the, the correct level of humidity. Wow. We conditioned the room and all of the materials that we were going to use for several days at the right temperature. And we kept it that way. Even, even scissors that we were cutting the tape with, even screwdrivers. It's that meticulous. It has to be because we didn't want to change any, any of the temperature. And the temperature was holding in the humidity. And it has to also stay away from the glazing. The glazing in this case is Optium Museum Acrylic that's okay. made by TrueView. And it is amazing because it, it has no reflections or the most minimal amount of reflections we have today. It has the UV properties that one needs to preserve the colors. Mm -hmm. And that's at 99% plus it has the reflective uh, qualities we need of clarity so that you can see the artwork. Because Who knew 200 years ago <laughs> that somebody would be sitting here and the artist is saying or thinking, is that possible 200 years later? I know. Uh, it, it's, I, I it's, know. It it's, gives me goose chills. This frame, is that the original frame? I don't know if it's the original frame to the watercolor, but it is definitely, a, like I said, it has the attributions of Napoleon 
hard to pull myself away from this because it's <laughs> fabulous. Tell us some of the other pieces that you have here. This is a great project that we worked on. It is uh, belonged to a, a family in Charleston, South Carolina. And you can see the, the one on the left with the hole, holes is the way it came into us. This is a traditional landscape format, even though it's a seascape. It's of, of an island, a Dutch island in the Caribbean. And it was brought to us, as I said, it had been in the family, and they wanted to have it restored. So we took on the challenge, and there is no canvas behind these holes, so we didn't really know what, what was supposed to have been there. But by the time we got our research done, we were able to figure out the, what the tower looked like on the castle on the fortress and what the boats look like. Well now I understand there's some exciting news. A Picasso? We've got a Picasso that we're getting ready to frame. It's a beautiful print. You know there are lots of... Uh, Picasso had worked in all mediums. Uh, ceramics, oils, he went, and he was a wonderful printmaker. And this one that we're getting ready to frame in a very special frame is, uh, is one of his well-known prints. This is incredible. This is like a candy store for art lovers. Um, the one in front of me, what is that? That's a Salvador Dali painting. And it is a painting. It's a, it's a work on paper. Uh, art is in, uh, kind of in a hierarchy, if you will. There, there are paintings, which are usually canvas with oil or acrylic. And then there are drawings, which are on paper. And it's usually paint, uh, pencil, charcoal, or watercolor. This is acrylic on paper, but because it's acrylic, it makes it a painting. And it's here for condition. Uh, it's important that a, that a person who owns art, whether you consider yourself a collector, an art buyer, or just someone who, who owns paintings, to, to have them looked at by a conservator to do a proper condition report so that you have a baseline. Okay because condition influences the value of the piece. So besides uh, restoration work mm -hmm. uh, and, and all these fantastic things you take from, a, uh, fr from nothing to a lot, what else do you do at the Conservancy? We, we do specialized framing as well. Okay. And we also do fine art appraisals. And it's interesting, we're working on that Buddha over there and our, our challenge on that was to take off the granite Buddha, uh, the granite base that was on it, uh -huh. and and now we're building another one for it. But the challenge is that's from the 10th century. Wow! And vibrations, <laughs> we can't have any <laughs> vibrations, and yet we had to get this hard material off without vibrating the piece. Now you are located in a secret location that I can't even say. We are. Uh, you're soon going to give the contact information of how to get in touch with you if you're a client. Your clients are mostly in South Florida or uh, they're, around they're, the country. It, it's a mix. Okay. Be, um, mostly, but yeah, mostly South Florida, I would say, because a lot of times it's uh, it's it's local in the sense that you so that you're not shipping pieces around. And there's so many good collections here, and there's so much good material here that it has become a, a, uh, a wealth of, of art. It's a good art center. So if I have a piece of art that needs some restoration, mm -hmm. how do I get in touch with you, Lainey? You can call us, or you can send us an email, or you can go onto our website and just uh, upload the photographs and get in touch with us that way. Very good. So you'll notice on, on the screen we've got the website address. We also have the telephone number and the contact information for Laney Lewis. This has been Danny Bayard with Laney Lewis in the Fine Arts Conservancy and it has been a fascinating tour. Oh, it's been my pleasure. I love talking about it. <laughs> and I love being here. <laughs> Great. We'll see you guys next time. Great. Thank you.